Welcome back to Let's Play Fire Emblem, Genealogy of the Holy War. We just got through Verdain, and we are on to Chapter 2, Crisis in Augustria. Verdain has fallen to Granvale. On orders from Belhalla, Sigurd governs the region from Evans Castle with his newly wed wife, Deidre ever at his side. Married already, huh? However, Granvale's actions in Verdain are ill-received by neighboring Augustria. The lords of Augustria lead a storm of heated rhetoric denouncing Granvale. To make matters worse, the renowned pacifist Augustrian ruler, King Imka, has been slain by an unknown hand. Imka's successor to the Augustrian crown is his firstborn son, Prince Chagall. Even as the Augustrian crisis unfolds, the bulk of Granvale's army remains in Isaac. And so Chagall has given the lords his first command as their new king to invade Verdain. As the sole defender of Grand Vale's front, Sigurd once again finds himself in battle. Augustria, Dominion of the Douchebags. Rockasis, I'm leaving for Augusty. I can't rest until I've convinced King Chagall to end his foolish warmongering. Please don't do it, brother. You know as well as I that Chagall had murdered his father himself. You'll only be endangering yourself for a lost cause. He won't listen to you. You mustn't say such a thing about your king. I too have heard that r the rumors of King Chagall's involvement. But they are just that, rumors. There remains no evidence against them. Surely His Majesty will see reason in them this matter, if I simply persuade him, but... Enough. I'll leave three of my finest knights here to defend Nordion, should the worst come to pass. Rockasis, you needn't look so sad, I will be back. I promise, I'm not about to abandon you in death. Andy... Oni-chan! Yes, in case you guys didn't know, Rockasis does have a thing for her older brother. The first in a long line of many blonde-haired women in Fire Emblem. Please, your majesty, reconsider your militant ambitions. Your father before you worked so hard to build an era of peace with Granvale. A war will only bring ruin to our people, bringing disgrace upon your good name for generations to come. I implore you, do not start a war. So it's you, Eldigan of Nordion. You dastard, my father adored you. And you used his trust to undercut me at every turn. But now my father is no more, and long live the king of all Augustria! For years you've made me play the fool, and now I will reward you in kind. Guards, throw this man in the dungeon! Wait, your majesty, please! Good riddance to the eyesore. Send my orders to Bordeaux at Harhain. Seize Nordion Castle. Once that nuisance is dealt with, we're clear to throw all we've got at Granvale. Your Majesty King Shigal. I see you've made your decision at last. Manfroy. Yes, just as we agreed. Father is dead and by my hand. There is no turning back now, even so. 
I still don't know if we stand a chance. Remember, Granvale still adheres to that tawdry old peace treaty with you. And the entire army is distracted in Isaac. Strike now when you could not possibly fail. The right to the downfall of Granville will mark the rise of Augustriel's juggernaut's leading power. Chagall, Emperor of the World! I like the sound of that. Mm, we can only hope your ambition is... Your ambition will be rewarded. Milady, we've received word that Lord Eldigan was arrested in Augustine. What? You must be joking. Oh, why didn't I try harder? I shouldn't have let him go. That isn't our only problem, my lady. With Lord Eldigan gone, we need to be aware of Harheim's movements. Lordship's absence. A strike from them is inevitable. After the Verdane incident, they're most likely out for revenge on us. Especially Lord Elliot. Oh, that Elliot. I can't believe how many times I've had to tell him I'm not interested in him. Smug, self-absorbed swine like him are the absolute worst. If only more men were cut from the same cloth as LD. It's too bad they aren't. Else perhaps someone would stand a chance to marry me. Perhaps. Wow. Er, be that as it may, Lord Eldigan's cross knights are still dispatched to the north at Fort Silvale. Well away from here. We three are all who remain. Nordion is vulnerable and they know it. Rest assured, my brothers and I will do all we can to defend the castle, but the odds are against us. I'm sorry, milady. Very well, thank you, ye vase. But please, look after yourselves. Don't waste your lives for me. Be sure to tell Ava and Alva that I'm sorry for this. We are not worthy of such kind words, milady. Even so, Lord Eldigan handpicked us to defend you. Our lord gave us a task, and we will see it through. As paladins of Nordion, our lives are yours, no matter what. To our dying breaths, we live to defend you. How nice of them. Let me get this straight. Eldigan ticked off the king and got himself a little prison time for his troubles. Ah, ha, ha, that's perfect. Elliot, lay siege to Nordion at once. Let's see some tears roll down Eldigan's cheeks. With pleasure, father. Uh-oh. What's going on here? Sire, we have trouble. It appears that Lord Elgin has been taken prisoner and Nordion is under attack. I bear a message from Lady Rockasis. I bear a message from Lady Rockasis, pleading for aid. They've taken Eldigan? Why? Why in the world would they treat a man so esteemed this way? Inform everybody to make ready at once. We ride for Nordian at once. No matter the cost, Rockasis needs us. We might never admit it, but Rockasis has always been dear to Eldigan. The loss of Rockasis would gainly, gravely wound him. My lord, you're preparing for another battle, aren't you? I'm sorry, Deidre. I owe so much to Eldigan. I could never abandon his sister in a time like this. I thought as much. I'm not about to stop you. No, I will accompany you. What? No, I can't allow that. I refuse to endanger you like this. My lord, do you not remember our vows? He swore to never leave my side, and I... I am uneasy. I have a feeling that if you and I were to part, we would never find each other again. 
Please grant me this. Let me stay by your side. I'm sorry, you're right. I did promise. Very well, let us ride together. But you mustn't leave my side. I won't. Da 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 da. Alright, guys, welcome to part one of chapter two. Whew, can't believe we made it all the way to Augustria. Um, and we're actually gonna start with some arena stuff. And let's, uh, let's have... Uh... Alright guys, brief cut there, um, I did off-screen arena stuff, except for one thing, um, I am going to put Ira through the final level of the arena, and we'll see, uh, we'll see what this guy has in store for us. And as we can see, Ira pretty easily defeated him. Skill and strength, nice. Alrighty. Ha! Huh, heh! Nobody here's ever bested me before. Who in the world are you, anyway? The way you fought, you were brain with spirit. Mm, I'd wager there's something you're here to fight for, right? All I've done is chase money for all these years. But I look at you and suddenly, it all feels so meaningless. Hey, I don't suppose you're recruiting. Maybe using my blade for something real and grander than me is just what I need. And, um... Holland joins us. Um, yeah. Holland's essentially Ira, except with, um... higher bases overall and higher durability. My Ira got quite a bit of experience uh, fighting through Verdane Forest, so... Actually, I kind of like Ira a bit more. Um, just the way it's turned out for me, because she, she's up at 11 defense, which actually matches Holland, so that's really good for her. Um, yeah, Holland, he has Luna, um, which, again, is kind of... It's kind of like a critical, basically. But, um, it basically means the enemy doesn't have any defense, so... In some cases, it'll be worse than critical. Like, if you're attacking a mage and you get Luna, doesn't really matter. Would prefer to critical. If you're attacking an armor knight and you get a Luna, that's pretty good. Um, Pursuit is a class skill. A rank in swords. Meaning, we could give him the silver sword, but, um... Yeah, we're not going to. He's a somewhat decent candidate for magic swords because he does get some magic on promotion. Um, and for the most part, he's just your uh, bread and butter infantry unit. Uh, nothing too special. And I'd like to point out that uh, Deidre, she actually has major Naga holy blood, which means... We can't use her, so I just sold her swap dial for the I sold her silent staff. Um yeah, so she'll just be chilling. And we have um what else do Oh yeah. Lex does not have a Brave Axe in this timeline. It's uh incredibly disappointing. But when I was replaying um, the last part of chapter one, I completely forgot to have Lex uh, go into his secret event, and that meant no, that means the that means no brave axe for Lex. 
So, um, yeah. Kind of a, a bit of a painful mistake to live with, but, uh, uh, I mean, le yeah, it does mean he'll be doing, like, half the damage he's supposed to be doing, but honestly, Lex is mainly a durability unit anyway, so he'll be, he'll be fine. Um, and gonna move out. Eh. Let me see her range. Okay. So, Ethlyn will move out. And, uh, we actually have a chat. Deidre? Oh, wait. Talk to your sister-in-law. How are you faring so far, Deidre? I know my brother is worried something fierce about you risking your life like this. Ethan, thank you for asking, but I'm doing just fine for now. Everything will be all right, I can feel it. So long as I'm at Sigurd's side, our happiness will see us through. I don't think I've seen ever seen Sigurd as happy as he's been since he met you. He's practically a changed man. Ethan, here, I'd like you to have this. I've been meaning to give it to you for a while. Oh, is, is this a light brand? Wow, these are so rare and hard to come by. Are you sure you want to give this, give me this? Of course, I know that it'll serve you well. I can't thank you enough, Deirdre. I'll always treasure it. Fuck yeah. Um, I'm gonna use it a bit right now to just like fight through. Uh, but I plan on pawning all that off to Alec, um, once he gets a bit better. Man, my infantry unit's so slow. I do believe Quan has a conversation, so... Kinda gotta bring him along. Um, can't have Ideen fall behind. Do not want Ideen falling behind. I, uh, I gave a Slim Sword to do, and that'll just give him a bit more evasion. Especially now that he's not guaranteed to have Weapon Triangle advantage. So, hopefully he can, uh, whack some guys and... I do think I'm gonna give his money to Aideen next turn, because, yeah, Aideen needs money. Quan has a conversation, so I'm gonna bring him out, and Sigurd has a conver- well, obviously I need to bring Sigurd. So let's see what Nordion does. Evil. Lady Rockasis of Nordion, huh? I've been looking forward to this. She's been playing cruel games with my heart for years, but now look how the tables have turned. I have an entire army behind me against her insignificant guard. What could she possibly do? She is powerless to resist coming back to Harhine with me, and who knows, perhaps one day. She'll admit she wants it. Oh, man. Wow. Elliot. I mean... Yeah. Elliot is just... He's just straight up... He straight up wants to rape her. Wow. Our task is to form a defensive line. Don't let the enemy lure you from your post. Stand your ground, understood? So, Harheins finally made their move. Perfect. Release the brigands on the villages, as we arranged. Under the old king, you couldn't even dare to meddle in any of his property. 
Yet it's the easiest thing to cheat Chagall. Strip everything of worth you find and bring it back here. Leave no stone unturned. Yep. Harhein is going for Nordion's throat. Hmm, who do I side with here? Let's wait and see how this unfolds. Instruct the men to remain where they are until the dust settles. Alrighty. As we can see, we got our rapist coming down here. Elliot with a silver lance. Um, but we also have these guys. They're pretty strong. Um, yeah, and I'm just checking inventory. Return band, uh, kind of useless, but, um, you can actually sell it for a lot of money. So, um, I think I'm gonna give it to someone like Ideen, who needs the cash. Uh, especially, like, yeah, I'm gonna use what Do has now, plus the return staff to, uh, have ID buy um I'm gonna have her buy the silent staff. Yeah, um if you keep the green units alive for this entire chapter, you get a nice little reward, which is a like uh a night ring, I believe. It allows a movement a unit that's not mounted to move again. However, um, it's kind of difficult to keep them alive, especially when I'm not using uh, Sigurd and Quan, who are like my best units in this situation. So yeah, it's unlikely we'll, uh, Jesus Christ, I deem. It's very unlikely we'll be, uh, those guys will stay alive. But they are going to buy us some t nice time uh, as we get to Locasis. Quan and Du will uh, give his gold pile to Ideen. And Arden, keep moving. Deirdre. I don't know why I'm moving Deirdre along, but I think she might have a talk. Um, yeah. It's gonna be a bit of a long walk to, um, to Nordion. Green units fighting. Gotta love it. So if I had Sigurd and Quan, they'd pretty much already be there because of um, how strong the green units are, or because of, because they're promoted and they have so much movement. And that kind of stacks up uh, as you're moving along the road. So, yeah. Over like th the three turns that it takes to get there. So it does take some time. This is the part of Fire Emblem 4 that I don't like, and that is just mindlessly moving crap. Mindlessly moving your whole army across the map. I get it that you kind of need this to um, convey the epic scale of the story, so it does play well into the story. It's just very tedious, 
so yeah. Um, anyway, my cavalry unit should be able to engage his cavalry units next turn. Which is gonna bode well for us. Yeah. Um, I Dean first. Could have probably moved people in a more uh, efficient manner. Idina's is gonna take like forever to get anywhere. Arden, move up. Uh, yeah. Very important that I. Uh, it's very important that I remember that Arden has a special event. Da 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 da. So these guys are actually seem like they're gonna be totally fine. Um, uh, they don't have any healing though, so so the um, Elliot's guys will like wear them down eventually, but for now it's totally fine. Yep, this uh, green unit's fighting. Very entertaining. And he hits him back. These paladins are very bulky. Um, and that guy didn't dodge. Yeah, Elliot is just very sad. He's a very sad man. It's just like... His, his army is just not... This is not going well. Like He has such a numerical advantage over these guys, but... Um, His army is not able to make much of a dent. And the douchebags are on the move. Alright guys, um, I'm going to end this part right here. And I will see you guys in episode 10. Or is it... Yeah, this was episode 10. I will see you guys in episode 11 of Let's Play Fire Emblem Genealogy of the Holy War. Please like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think of uh, the Augustrian Lords. And I'll see you next time.